and um, <clears throat> and then I, I got uh, really sick, and it 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 was uh, I was like I, I had been out hiking for 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 a week, uh, and sort of my body just <laughs> started breaking down. Basically, I had like my 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 knee stopped working, and I was like thinking about maybe I need to be air airlifted out of this uh, mountains. Okay, thank you for joining me again for another healing story. I have a lovely chap here today by the name of John. We shall call him Norwegian John, as he hails from that part of Scandinavia. He has a, I hope, interesting story to tell. Something to do with his gut, I believe, and his healing of such things. So I'm going to hand you over to him. John, if you could just introduce yourself, and then we'll just let it roll. Thank you, David. Really nice to be on the show. Great to have you here. Great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I saw your previous videos on healing stories, and I felt compelled to uh, to jump on on this um, possibility. Um, right. I'm uh, I'm um, 36 years old, and um, my my story begins when I'm 15 years old, and um, I. I well, we were traveling to uh, Germany for a class trip, and um, all of, from from nowhere basically, I, I just started having this uh, eczema on on my my feet, and um, like being a, a young ambitious guy, I was really I, I didn't want to pay so much attention to it, so I just sort of uh, I didn't um, yeah I, I didn't put a lot of thought into it. I just thought yeah this is something that will go over and. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it sort of got a bit worse and a bit worse, and and um, try try to try to see every doctor that we could find in the subject, and try out like all all the traditional medicine. To you hadn't had it before. You hadn't had eczema before. No, no, I hadn't had any any health issues really. It was brought up by like this uh, hippie hippie mom who was very uh, sort of into just natural eating and uh, brilliant. Love like that, so like very very healthy healthy background I think uh, childhood, um, and uh, <clears throat> but the conventional medicine didn't really have like anything you know uh, concrete to offer. Uh, it was uh, for those who have had ex eczema, they know that the cortisone is also always something that's uh, it's like the first thing offered, and. Uh, and you can use it for some time, and then your skin will get so thin that it doesn't, uh, you can't use it anymore, and you have to get forth, and, and you know, yeah, and it, it doesn't feel, you, you feel that this is just something that is aimed to ease the, the symptoms and, and mm. not really get to, get to the root of the problem. Yeah. So we went, went through that, and then we went through some uh, light therapy and, and really looked into all, all sort of uh, alternative medicine that we could find really. Uh, homeopathy, is that the right word in English? Uh, homeopathy. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I, uh, like we met some great doctors along the way and really tried to do, do their role, but, uh, but it, was, it, wasn't, it never was that bad at, at that stage that I felt that I couldn't like I couldn't live with it or, or anything like that. It, it, it was something that, uh, bloomed up every now, now and then. Uh, but of course, there was this thought all the time in the back of my head that, you know, it, I should deal with it somehow, but uh, I really don't know what, what to do, what would be like a, a proper way to address it and, and try to find a way to cure the, the root cause of this. Uh, <clears throat> and the years went on, and I, I went to the army, and um, <clears throat> it, it worked somehow there. I, I remember when we were on, on the last, like, uh, Few months of the of the year, we we had like this last couple of exercises where we would be in in the woods for ten days or something, and uh, then it had I got quite bad, and I, I went into the army doctor, and it, it was like, <laughs> why didn't you come and sh show this to me earlier? Like, and I just wasn't I guess in some sort of like a, a refusal mode, you know, I didn't I didn't want to think about it, I just put it aside, and and the years went went on like this, it. It would bust them up and it would go go down. It would 
be a bit easier, but it was in a, it's a, it's like a, a hard place to have it in because when you, when it's really bad, it's, you can't really sport and you, I, I was always like, like to be active and stuff like that. So, so it, it um, started sort of uh, affecting my life more and more. And, and, um, and then I also started noticing that there were some other uh, things going on in, in my body that it, that perhaps you know um, there was some low grade inf uh, infection all the time causing me to get very easily sick and uh, and not like uh, not have the energy <clears throat> many many people say that you know when you're a, a guy and you're 20 you feel completely uh, uh, that you're never gonna die, sort of. But I, I never, I really never had that. I, I could never re relate to that, uh, that feeling. And then, yeah, some years ago, I, I, I stumbled on this uh, term, brain fog, and I, I felt, yeah, that's that's very much like what I, I, I can relate to that. That it, uh, that it's, it's causing you know also something in in um, <clears throat> the way you you think and, and the way sort of your your cognitive cap, uh, mm -hmm. capabilities and I, I guess that like with with that and there were some small other symptoms coming into the picture as well where i i, I really started getting this urge to but I, I understood that it's 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 not getting it's not going to go away by by itself and even though it's it's handleable like this it's i really like need to start to find find some um, some way out of out of it, and then I, I got uh, really sick, and it 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 was uh, I was like I, I had been out hiking for 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 a week, uh, and sort of my body just <laughs> started breaking down. Basically, I had like my 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 knee stopped working, and I was like thinking about maybe I need to be air airlifted out of this uh, hiking trip, like in the middle of, of the Swedish mountains, and um, and then I came home, and I was like. Uh, the, the eczema got really bad and it started spreading over the whole body and it looked like a, you know, a third third degree burn wound basically like very painful it couldn't, couldn't really walk and anything uh, and uh, and then I, I had this moment to sort of really stop and 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 think about um, or start to really put effort on on finding solutions and and uh, read up because i was basically just lying uh, in bed for for three weeks and then i found wim hof uh and i found uh, um <clears throat> found some diets uh, that i wanted to to look into i i felt i, I was eating quite healthy from b before but uh, but i wasn't following any specific diet uh and uh and then just for, for the like the acute uh, symptoms I was having, I um, I went to a, a specialist doctor and and I, I had sort of at this point I had sort of already given up on uh, normal doctors because uh, they would always say that uh, you know uh, cortisone that's probably the best and <laughs> uh, and knowing that that, that wasn't really a, a long term solution so I ended up ended up with a dermatologist that, that was like really great and I talked about the, the things I had been reading uh, about different diets and she like it really felt like you know when you meet a really good doctor that, that really listens and, and, mm -hmm. and is open to, to different suggestions it's mm -hmm. great and she like rolled her chair really close and she looked me in the eyes and like really really said okay we we need to get this fixed you know you're too young to to have this and, and next next thing you'll be dealing with like arthritis it will move it will move in the body from you know from wow. from just the <clears throat> just being an actor uh, and um and then this is said maybe you should try this autoimmune paleo diet have you looked into that and, mm -hmm. and it was quite close to the other ones i had sort of zoomed in on myself so so that's um where my journey then started with, with uh, combining Wim, Wim Hof method i think many of, of your viewers are very familiar with, with mm -hmm. that and, uh, and then combining it with, with, with this diet and you said it's paleo diet is it it's it's sort of pale yeah it's paleo approach so yeah. so it's basically you're excluding sugar 
um, grains um, and milk products. And fructose or processed sugar? Processed sugar as well. Fructose uh, in the beginning stage. Yeah. yeah. And then you can just allow berries and, and other things to, to filter in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I would eat like a very restricted diet to begin with, with just sort of bone broth and uh, seaweed and <laughs> uh, yeah, high quality, high quality meats, mm. uh, fish, shellfish, mm. this sort of stuff. Well, you're in the perfect place for the fish, at the very least. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> for those that didn't get this bit, um, John lives in a beautiful harbour town in the uh, southwest. Southwest? Southwest of Finland, yeah. Finland yeah yeah okay so that's good so so let's do, let's recap what's interesting is that you know people think of eczema and they quite often associate it just being one thing don't they oh I just have a skin condition yeah. but it could well be a marker for something worse it could be something autoimmune which I guess eczema is anyway let's face it I mean it's your it's your body going oh something's wrong I need to over invade this area to deal with it so so the eczema, where it started off, and I, I'm thinking here about my son because he ha he does occasionally get a bit of eczema. He's only six, um, and then this has led to further complications. But it's often the way, isn't it, that we need to that the proverbial poo really needs to hit the fan for us to realise what's going on. And, and your story there about seeing uh western doctors in other words not holistic doctors i mean they try to be holistic but of course they can't because they're not trained in that fashion that quite often they only apply a plaster to your problem because that's the only solution they have and it works for some people it's just in your case and in fact probably many others they need to go they need to do a deeper dive and think of the problem as a holistic problem looking at your whole body and that's what they didn't do and this is then where the dermatologist so you had a dermatologist then that was slightly broader in her thinking which is really cool so where you are now then so she's figured out that it's got to be part diet based yes. which as we know it, it was <clears throat> um how do you think uh the wim hof method as you say, most people watching this will be aware of the Wim Hof method. If they're not, the Wim Hof method is, um, well, it's, it's why I started the evolution of Dave. It's the first thing I tried in my, in my journey. And it's a process of combining cold water, so cold showers or ice baths, with a breathing technique, very similar to pranayama, and also possibly a bit of yoga and various other bits and pieces. And it has profound benefits on many different conditions. Uh, what part of the Wim Hof method do you think would have enabled some kind of healing? Um, I think like definitely bo both the cold exposure. Mm. Uh, that's actually the one, the part that I use more regularly. Uh, we have great conditions for that in Finland. Uh, Absolutely. Most <laughs> times out of the year. Uh, and, um, but also the breathing, like uh, the fact, you know, that you're aware that there's something you you can feel it in your body when you are in the retentions that there is something going on that there there is some healing properties mm -hmm. going on uh, and uh, I used it also much to sort of visualize uh, the the healed version of of my feet and my skin. That's so really I, important, isn't it? Um, I, I th think so. The, the, um, so the other person that uh, the, the the latest healing video that will come up over the next couple of days a chap called tim snell he had that approach as well in other words it's the belief and i said to him it's very similar to joe dispenza and i know that the name joe dispenza is either viewed positively positive positively or negatively by some i really like what he uh, his message but that's it isn't it you know uh, in in part of the healing process quite often it comes from up here and the belief that you can heal you yep. need that for it to work, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think also it, it creates, you know, the Wim Hof, it, it creates sort of a space for you where you can just, uh, uh, I think, I, I mean, a lot of these uh, diseases are also stress related and we're, we're living such hectic lives. So when you get that, uh, <clears throat> it, 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 it forces you to, to take that 20, 30 minutes for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, then you sort of, you start to appreciate that time and you start to, 
understand the, the value of, of just stopping. And then, yeah, I think that's uh, during these COVID times as well, it's, it's really like, uh, I, I'm, I'm becoming more and more of a believer of, of that, of, of handling the stress, but it's so ab abstract when you're sick and you, I, mean, I, I always knew this, of course, that you, you know, the first thing you should deal with is, is stress. And I, uh, I, I work with, with sleep apnea also. So that's also, of course, very tightly rela related to, to stress recovery. So um, for me, this, uh, to, to go a bit back to the, the diet, the whole AIP, there's a lot of, of great information about that on, on the net and a lot, a lot of great Facebook groups. Uh, and and it, it also stands for, it's, it's not only the diet, diet part, but it's also the, the whole holistic approach to sort of an AIP lifestyle, you know. What does that stand for, AIP? It's, it, well, it can be autoimmune uh, protocol or autoimmune paleo. Right, gotcha. And did that get to the end of your story of, of the condition itself? In other words, once that uh, dermatologist and indica had indicated that it could well be diet-based, was that uh, the beginning of the healing or, or did, did, the, um, did your condition get any worse before it got better? Uh, no, it actually it it got better than quite quickly when I started this this out, and uh, and as I said like before, I, I I had I had tried other I had tried ex tried excluding milk and tried excluding gluten and uh, and all of this common stuff, but it was when I really like combined, <clears throat> and and then perhaps had the time to to meal prep uh, well and and. And really execute it, and not make any uh, side jumps with it. Uh, so I was very strict with it. But the good news is that I was I, I was able to be strict with it for um, 90 days, three months, and then I came out on the other side, side for the first time in 20 years without uh, symptoms, and and I have stayed symptom free since, uh, even even after like starting to re reintroduce other or. I, I eat some, I have some gluten now and I have some milk every once in a while, but I, I, I keep it like in very small dosages. That's amazing. Do you also fast? Uh, yeah, I do <coughs> the intermittent fasting. So yeah, it's brilliant. Eat any, any, any breakfast and then eat for in, a, in an eight hour window. I, I personally think that when you add the fasting bit to um, an eating protocol, I, I really do think that helps accelerate the benefits yeah. when you've got that extra window of time to to really get rid of all that crap that you've had the day before or in your case not crap really good stuff um then it, it does it, it enhances your stomach's ability your gut's ability to get to to work on the next bit doesn't it so uh, i mean even I, I i was dairy intolerant ever since i started fasting i no longer am i don't have much dairy but i allow myself small amounts of cheese and i don't have any ill effects Whereas I used to for quite some time, so um, I, I, I think I'm glad. I'm glad you said the fasting is in there. I think that really makes a big difference. So tell me what your paleo, typical paleo diet would look like, or, or um, a, your food prep. What would that look like on a typical day? Well, for work lunch, I, I usually just have like uh, broth made of you know, chicken broth or good high quality meat broth get to buy it here in um, in Finland at least in, in <clears throat> nice packages you don't have to make it yourself because it's uh, <laughs> quite a uh, yeah, it's a little process and it's so smelly yeah. and stuff like that so yeah, yeah. <laughs> the family might not be <laughs> so eager and, uh, and you know yeah, about broth just a side note it's like uh, it's like the joke of the office when i come in with my broth and i have seaweed in it and it's it doesn't like it doesn't smell like the best meal <laughs> but, uh, is, it, is it local seaweed as well uh, it's uh, no i well it's, it's atlantic like, right yeah. uh, and then i just add some you know broccoli or cauliflower or hmm. whatever i happen to have in, in the fridge yeah very good perhaps and perhaps some high quality, like uh, raw raw sausages made of, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, sounds like a good meal to me. And uh, I don't know whether you noticed any, when you changed to this diet, did you notice any weight loss that you had to go through as your body adapted to it? 
uh, yeah, I guess I got some comments around that, like also like what what happened to you <laughs> to you guys? I had some extra. Yeah, I was carrying. I wasn't. It, it wasn't a lot of extra kilos, but I can just see my body getting leaner and so. Yeah. So and and just this feeling of lightness and uh, and um, perhaps this this uh, of feeling in invulnerable. Uh, What's the English term? Invulnerable. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. As a, as a male of, of 20, you know, yeah. uh, sort of, I, 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 I get it now. Now I understand what it means to, be, obviously I'm a bit, I'm, I'm like, I'm 36 years old now. I, I, I have, I'm, I know how that uh, life is very uh, delicate and, uh, and all of this and that. But, <clears throat> but anyhow, it's, it was so mind blowing to me coming out of it uh, and, mm. and like not having these con constant uh, infections in the body. Because that's you know then you, you're able to start to build up this you, your training routine and you can mm. you can add the next good uh, routine whether it be like the, the five Tibetans but yeah. I, I really enjoy that as uh, mm. from your channel it's, I think I'm completely addicted to that in the morning yeah amazing isn't it when you crowbar these little habits into your life it doesn't take long. For it just to become an uh, like an automatic response, you don't even think about it. I bet when it comes to doing the five Tibetans or the Wim Hof method practice or Soma breath practice, as you know, I do that. Um, you do it long enough, it just becomes part of your daily routine. You don't even, you know, it's a bit like brushing your teeth. You don't even think about doing it beforehand. You just go ahead and do it. It's amazing. Um, I can only imagine, as you know, um, John, you probably know that I I do my cold showers in the garden with the hose yes um and for you you could do that but i would imagine your winter time that would be quite an interesting experience <laughs> yeah yeah my, my way of getting the the wim hof in or the the ice bath in is uh we have this um centers for for uh, ice bathing many in the in the town so you have like a sauna where you can go and you, you can jump in the ice bath directly. So we happen to have one very close by, so I, I take a, a jog and I don't, in the morning time, the, the sauna is, isn't open, obviously. So, uh, but there's a small gang of uh, ice bathers that's, that's there early in the morning and, and we just jump in and then we get up and, and then you need to sort of dry off quite quickly and get some uh, wool clothes on, you know, to yeah. get warm and then you jog, jog to, to work from there. And that's like, uh, that's also like, just one of the, these things that has been available there all the time. Like mm. I would do the occasional winter baiting before, but uh, I didn't like. And you, and you, everybody in Finland knows that it's it's good for you. And people yeah. who winter baits they don't they don't have like or ice bait they they never get sick. Like that's yeah. something that's common. As, as a as a percentage, how many Finnish? people do you think would already without the you know for us in the uk and probably in america and other countries we needed wim hof to tell us to get in the ice in finland it was known so how many you know as a percentage how many finnish people do you think use yeah. the ice yeah i, th I think probably like 90 uh, percent have tried it but it's i, I don't think it's more than five percent that use it uh, Oh, really regularly it's uh yeah it's it's the same phases you see over and over again at this yeah place, so so it's like a sort of a forgotten art in, in some ways mm, it's interesting but you get that all over the place with different disciplines don't you there's lots of things that we know as humans we know will help us but quite often we let life get in the way yeah. we, we put these barriers in the way and then we forget about these amazing things that make us feel good you know right down to it could just be going for a run it could be going for a swim whatever it is we believe that we don't have the time to do it or for whatever reason we forget about it and it doesn't take long just it, just as it doesn't take long to build up a good habit it also doesn't take long to lose it <laughs> no uh, well that's very uh, i was just reading james nestor's breath mm. uh, yeah so do you tape your mouth I don't. I haven't tried tried that yet. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, it's. Um, I've talked with uh, with some of my my clients because we have. Uh, so I, I work with with sleep apnea in in um, the sense that we have a, a remote diagnostic tool for for people who might suffer from sleep apnea. So it's mm -hmm. uh, so you 
you have this device uh, during the night and you, you see how, how you breathe <clears throat> and uh, you might get a C CPAP if, you're, if you suffer from obstructive uh, sleep apnea. And, um, but uh, of course it would be very bad for our business if, uh, <laughs> if it turns out you can only just tape it. And you don't That's all it. you need to do. <laughs> 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 but, but you and I can discuss it. We'll just not tell anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, mean, I completely believe in it. I mean, I, I, yeah. yeah, you're just not allowed to promote it. No. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't mention it. Don't worry. You're, you're not even reading that book. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, you're, you're doing. You're, yeah, you're I used. do it. Yeah, yeah. it's it's quite, it's quite funny because um, I've been doing it again for a few months. So initially, I did it after reading The Oxygen Advantage by Patrick McEwen, which is a really good book. It's it's not as interesting a read as breath by james nestor but it's still a good book uh and it was that book that prompted me to take my mouth up and i wrongly and arrogantly assumed that after a couple of months of taping it up that i was fixed i was cured yeah. so i stopped doing it and then i had about a small bout of hay fever where i got a blocked up nose and that kind of switched everything and made me realize especially after reading then james nestor's book on breath that I should take my mouth up again. So I've been doing it again for the last four months. And so I have the tape by the side of my bed. Um, my wife, and because sometimes my son comes into our bed with us, uh, he's only six, um, they sometimes chuckle because they can hear in the dark the sound of a tape going <laughs> and then rip and then slapping it on my face. Um, but it works. I was saying this to Tim, the other guy that I've just done a story with, that. At the very least, uh, I've seen my dreams improve, um, which makes total sense. You know, as soon as you start engaging this, you start getting that parasympathetic response. Um, you know that the air is going in in the right way and it's being dealt with in your body the right way. So it makes sense that you might then get some cognitive benefits. And I'm able to wake up and I, I remember my dreams, which I wasn't able to before. My dreams feel like they're longer, which could just be that my REM sleep. You know, maybe I'm able to sense that my REM sleep is longer. Um, I haven't done any diagnostics, so I don't know at what level my delta waves were, you know, <laughs> were working. I don't know. But it just feels, I wake up and I feel better. And when my son, because he does suffer with a dairy intolerance or wheat intolerance, we haven't figured out which one yet, uh, he does have bad sleep. And you can see the sleep apnea. You know, if, if I'm awake and he's sleeping, I can see it. He stops breathing. Um, and I want to get some tape and stick it on his mouth. But obviously, he's probably a bit too young for me to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's an incredible tool. It's so easy, isn't it? Let's face it. You get some tape, slap it on your face, boom, you're done. Yeah. No, we're very, very intrigued by that. After her hearing that, you also get like the, the vivid dreaming out of it. That mm. sounds, sounds interesting. Mm. I also have I have have the exact I have a son that's uh, nine who also suffered from like uh, really? qu like quite bad apnea in in his sleep so I, I can relate to that as well and he actually had his tonsils removed and then you know oh, his wow. his voice changed completely and the the sleeping like the yeah the the apnea got better a lot better that's good but um, so yeah so so yeah, of course you can do some something with uh, um, surgery as, uh, as well mm. uh, if, if if there's like some really bad obstruction uh, yeah through. but uh, yeah but just generally about also uh, optimizing your sleep that's uh, that's really something we have forgot about i think many many and uh, at least for myself also like just you know we don't this basic stuff of, of eating too late working too late uh, being exposed to the blue, blue light and uh, mm. Which so sort of now in the bubble that I guess we are in, uh, we're reminded about it constantly. But I think still many people are are, are not that aware. And what you could do with just sort of lightning or, or lighting in the uh, in the evening, mm. and how we react to sort of that we're okay if the light is uh, if we see the light uh, below our eyes mm. versus if we have a light above our head. That makes a, a big difference in, in the evening. Uh, <clears throat> whilst in the, in the morning, where our eyes are prepped for seeing light from above, then 
you need to get the, the light from the, the sun, obviously. So, um, like so, small hacks you can do in your home uh, and just uh, adjust adjust the lighting and, and uh, get, get a lot better sleep. Well, this is it. I, I mean, if it were possible, it's not because we've changed our lives in Western society so much now, but if it were possible for us to all go back living in a community, living in caves, waking up when the sun rises, going to sleep when the sun sets. Sounds like that. That's, I mean, I mean, I mean <laughs> we'd, we'd be fine. Yeah. That's, that's brilliant, John. I, I love that. I love that story. It's so cool to hear um, any kind of healing story like that. Do you have any other tips that you found have been useful for you? Um, well, I guess like, like one, one thing, um, because uh, yeah, there, there were some like quite quite dark times uh, yeah. for me there before I, I sort of because we're so um, there's so much uh, info and it's when you don't have a, a clear path to walk on um, it's it's difficult to to sort of really get behind any any idea so that's that's why I'm mentioning this uh, dermatologist who was like saying you know, yes maybe yeah maybe you should try that. Uh, the stuff so but one, one thing i was always thinking that you know the more pain you endure on this side of the sickness uh um on the like the sick versus healing spectrum the greater i'm going to feel about the moments in, in remission and and the more i will enjoy moments uh, spent being well and that is something i, I really feel like you know, that's I, i'm enjoying the fruits of that now that uh, that if someone's watching this in a, in a bad place to, to kind of remember that, that what we endure there there's something other something else waiting on, on the other side and when you put energy on something if you put thoughts on something the like so the, the right hints and the, the, the right info is going to uh, find you and it and it doesn't ha happen overnight you you so if you have the possibility if you know that you're if you find something that you think that might work for you then just really try to make some room in your schedule and 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 have a few weeks where you can like really start it properly uh, even though it, it might be hard to arrange in a busy life but uh, taking that time will be be the best spent time of your life yeah very wise words and that, and i have to assume that some people will be watching this uh, and suffering at the moment um, so I think they will be grateful to hear that story is there anything else that you think might be useful for people to hear I think, no I think that's um, if, if you're suffering from any any sort of autoimmune disease then I'd, I warmly warmly recommend this this is a this is not uh, just like a, a diet I think it, it, it has a lot of science Packing it up, and uh, it's sort of a, a very natural diet for anyone to be on. Um, I, I must admit, bone broth is something that I keep thinking about creating, and haven't got round to doing it. But it, I, I mean, the benefits are huge, and it, it, that's one of the things actually. You know, when we talk about forgotten skills, not that it's much of a skill to create bone broth, from what I understand. I mean, I've never done it before, but it is just chuck bones in, add water, add some veg and some seasoning, and bubble away for a while yeah that this is something especially post-war during the war especially that people i say the second world war you know this is this was commonplace you'd have bone broth all over the you know left right and center and you keep it going for a few days and uh as we've gradually softened our lives and and supposedly made our lives easier bought pro you know created processed food all this rubbish simple things like bone broth that has been lost to a generation is one of the great healers and no, you know, it's fairly obvious why it would be yeah. the, the amount of vitamins and minerals you get in bone broth is incredible, isn't it? Yeah. It now inspired me. I'm going to make some bone broth or at the very <laughs> least go and buy some. <laughs> <laughs> get in a very handy uh, cooler format. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I might, have to, I might have to cook it on the open fire so that it doesn't stink out the house. Yeah. 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 It's, <laughs> I, I created a fire pit in the garden uh, a few weeks, a few months ago. So I, I'll do it on that. Oh, nice, nice. John, thank you. Thank you very much. I am going to head your way, you know. I am, I, um, the more 
lovely, beautiful, Scandic people that I meet and speak to every single time I'm thinking I need to go and be amongst you people. Maybe there's, maybe there is a Scandic somewhere in me. Maybe, maybe there's a Viking in me. I'm not too sure, but either way, I, I just have a calling. I have a calling to, to head your way. So that's great to hear. We have a, one of the best saunas in our uh, cottage just outside of Turku. So if you're heading this way, be, be sure to give me a, a ring. I love that. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, why don't we all head to Svalbard? Yeah, yeah that would be awesome. Absolutely. That'd be very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, John, uh, for joining me here. I really appreciate it. I know other viewers will appreciate that story. I think I'm hoping it will be a, a, an inspiration to many that are suffering, as you say, any kind of autoimmune, really. Uh, it doesn't have to be similar to yours. I would imagine many other autoimmune conditions could greatly benefit from that protocol. Evolution of Dave signing off. Thank you.